In this video, we are going to learn how to use the natural exponential function f of x is equal to e to the x. Later on in calculus, you will learn how to apply it more. But in these problems, we just want to understand how to use it and where to find it on our calculator. So we have a word problem. An infectious disease begins to spread in a small city of population 10,000. After T days, the number of people who have succumbed to the virus is modeled by the function V at T is equal to 10,000 divided by 5 plus 1,245 E to the negative 0 0.97 T. Now that may look like a very hard problem, but with today's technology, all we have to do is to type it in and we can tell how many people will get this disease in this town after a certain number of days. Of course, we do need to thank the scientists that came up with this formula to help us estimate what the outcome would be. Of course, if you don't want to get sick, you always need to wash your hands. So, let's bring up the calculator and type this formula in. So I'm going to go to my y equal button because I want to be able to see the graph or I want to be able to see the table of values. So I can get many answers all at one time. But be careful when you type it in. So y is equal to 10,000 divided by, now it's divided by several things. So make sure that you put that in parentheses. 5 plus 1,245 E. You need to find the E on your calculator. It is under the LN button, so I'm going to hit second LN, which gets me the E button. E to the negative 0 0.97, and they have T, but we'll use our X. Close the parentheses. Now, I have just closed the parentheses for my exponent of the e. I need to close the parentheses again to finish off the denominator. Well, I could graph it. Now, this graph is not a very true graph. First of all, if I'm talking about after how many days, how many people get sick, I'm not going to look at negative days. So I'm going to change my window a bit. I will have my x's start at negative 2, even though I really just need it to start at 0. And let's go out to about 20 days. Well, how many people do we think will get sick? Once again, I don't need a negative number of people, but I will just type in a negative 2 just to see a little bit below my axes. And let's go up to see, is the town of 10,000? Let's send our y up to 3,000. And now let's graph it. Well, when I'm studying my graph, it looks like after a few days, wow, a lot of people start getting sick. Look at the number of people going up, 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 up. And then it tapers off. So I guess those people that are going to get sick have gotten sick and is not affecting the other people. Or maybe they just did a very good job of getting their rest and washing their hands. I'm a true believer, and that's how you will not get sick. Well, let's go to our table to get some actual answers. Second graph is the table. And it looks like at day zero, eight people showed up with the disease. After day one, 20, 21 people, give or take. Day two, approximately 54 people. Day three, 137. And after day five, 678 people got the disease. So even though you may not think we use math in the real world, there are some scientists out there finding these diseases, studying how they affect people, and finding those vaccines to help us. And they use these calculations. Yes, math is all around us. Now, let's work on a continuously compound interest problem. Okay, this is another situation, and we will use E. Continuously compounded interest. 
They are calculating your interest every single second. The formula is A is equal to P, your principal, times E to the RT. So A sub T, that's the amount of money you will have after T years. P is your principal. How much money are you putting in the bank or are you investing? R is the interest rate per year. And T is the number of years you will leave it in that investment. You notice we do not have an N in this formula. Like how many times per year are you going to compound it? Because we are going to compound it continuously. Some people call this PERT because they see the PE to the RT. Let's work a problem using continuously compounded interest. Find the amount after three years if $1,000 is invested at an interest rate of 12% per year compounded continuously. I have my formula. A is equal to P times E to the RT otherwise known as PERT. How much money will I have? Well, I'm going to invest $1,000. That is my principal. E to the R, 12%. That is 0.12. We should probably say 0 0.12. Times how many years am I going to leave it there? That would be three years. And now I just go to my handy dandy calculator. So in my calculator, I am typing in 1,000 and then find your E button. It's under the LN, the natural log. So the second LN button. E to the, and I have 0.12 times 3. Close the parentheses. Hit enter. And it looks like after three years, I will have $1,433.33. So I was able to get my answer, and I just typed this on the home screen of my calculator. But if I wanted lots of answers, like after three years, after four years, after five years, I could have typed this function into my Y equal button, my graphing button. So I type in 1,000 E to the, I knew my rate was 0.12 times X. That is my variable. I didn't type in 3 this time because I want to know that if I put in $1,000 and I'm receiving 12% interest compounded continuously, how much will it be? I'm going to go to my table. And sure enough, just like we got, when I plug in 3, I will have $1,433. And this table is rounding it off a little bit. But then if I wanted to know how much I had after 4 years, that would, that would be about 1600 after five years, about 1800 So I could get lots of answers looking at my function. Now, not everything grows. Some things decay. We saw those graphs that instead of being a growth function, they were a decay function. They were decreasing. This problem, a radioactive substance decays in such a way that the amount of mass remaining after t days is given by the function m at t is equal to 13 e to the negative 0.015 t, where m at t is measured in kilograms. Now this is very similar to our continuously compounded interest formula. We had p times e to the rt. Look at our rate here. It's not positive, it's negative, because it's decaying. It's going away. In this problem, we don't need to know this, but this 13, it must have been the amount of material that I started with, like my principal in the continuously compounded interest problem. But they just gave me this formula. And they want us to find the mass. Find the mass at time t equals 0. Well, I might have already given this answer away, but let's work it out. So, here we go. T equals zero. That's at the very beginning. Huh. M at zero. When I plug in zero, I will get 13 E to the negative once again. That's how I know this is decaying. It has a negative exponent here. And T is zero. So, M at zero is equal to 13 E to the 
What is anything times zero? Yeah, it's zero. And e to the zero, or anything to the zero, anything to the zero power is just one. So m at zero is equal to 13. So the mass at the beginning was 13 kilograms. That was the mass. But I might have given that away because remember the PERT formula? The P, that is the amount we started with. So actually at time zero, at the very beginning, when I start calculating this decay, I really could just look at that and see that at time zero, it started at 13. Okay, they also want to know how much of the mass remains after 45 days. So if I go back 45 days later, how much of this substance that I'm talking about will remain? Well, this I cannot do in my head. I will need to use my calculator. But let's plug it into the function. So after 45 days, so m at t, that'd be m at 45 days, it will equal, and some wonderful scientist has figured out this formula. If I started with 13, e to the, and this particular substance decays at this rate, negative 0 0.015. And my t, I'm going back after 45 days to see how much is left. And now I need my calculator. So I'm just on the home page of my calculator because I very specifically want to know after 45 days. If I wanted to know several of the days, I would type it into my y equal button so I could get lots of answers. I will have 13 e to the, now make sure when you type in this negative, you use the negative, not the minus sign. And it's 0 0.015, that is my decay rate, times 45. Because I want to know how much is left after 45 days. Remember, I started at 13. If I go back 45 days later, there of this particular substance, there is 6. Point, I would round that to like 6.2 kilograms of this substance left. So in this video, we are really just learning how to use the natural exponential function, which is f at x equals e to the x.